Hello there, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls. My name is Atten Risk. Well, that's my alias, but it's not my real name. But it doesn't matter. Anyways, guys, in this video today, I'm going to be doing a public demonstration of TN code and TD code. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, what exactly, what exact purpose do these two executables serve? And I'll just be on. I'll just keep it. You know, blunt here. These two executables serve the purpose to encrypt and decrypt data. You know, many people, for whatever reason, may want to keep certain information secret. You know, it could be to protect people's identities. You know, it's really up to you what you want to keep secret, and that's just that. But in this video, I'm going to be showing you how this um, tool works and how to use it. Now, let's say I have a file of, um, I don't know, of secret stuff. Could be my tax information, could be something like that. Now I'm going to type in my secret stuff. The thing is though, is that should my computer be stolen, anyone would have access to the secret stuff. But with encryption, it's not that really hard to secure stuff. So basically here, encryption scrambles something based on a key. So if you put in the word lol, you can scramble it based on, you know, another word, like maybe the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4. You can scramble data so that it can't be read by anyone without that key. Well, it can be, but you'd need to either brute force it or use a dictionary attack, but point is, it's basically just completely noob-proof. Okay, so as you can see here, this is the um, encoder, you know, executable. You can, if you like, download the source code. I'll make that available below. So if you don't trust my executables, um, even though I've just compiled them based on that source code using, I believe it's uh, VS2012, then it's entirely up to you. You can compile it yourself. It's not that hard. Um, but anyways, we'll get on to the video. Now, you just enter your key. So I'll put in 1234, one, even though it's a you know, terrible key to use because, you know, people could guess that and if you brute forced it, it would decrypt it, but that's beside the point. It's just a demonstration, so I'm not really securing anything of importance. So I'm going to click enter. Now you need to enter the name of the file you want to encrypt. This could just be just about anything. Pretty sure I spelled secret right. So it says here it's loaded the file into the RAM and the output name, so we'll do dot .t. Now, as you can see, we have a new file. This is the ciphertext that we got out of the um, algorithm. You can't read this, and you can't really decrypt it without the key. I'll give you an example. Let's say we wanted to open the secret.t file, and we didn't have the key. So I could just guess and say one, two, three, four, five, and then just try opening it using basically here just a wrong key. And we're gonna do lol dot out. And as you can see, it's bad data. We didn't decrypt it. That was a complete failure. Now, as I just demonstrated, you know, the decode um, executables also, you know, basically the same process. You send the correct key into the name of the file. And now we're going to do secret.txt. And that's just basically how the uh, system works. One executable will handle the decryption, one will handle the encryption, and this allows you to secure your data using an open sourced and easy to understand tool. This is especially good for people who are just learning C++, and I'm also just learning C++, so it's, you know, quite a godsend to actually have something like this. Now, the only bug is that it puts nulls at the end, which you can just delete. And apart from that, it's basically completely perfect except that whenever you load data into these executables, it will use as much RAM as you load into it. Oh. So the only real disadvantage with this system is the fact that 
you know, it uses a ton of RAM and it will double what is actually inside of the RAM to decrypt it. I do want to rectify that situation by possibly um, getting some help from the community in actually fixing up the way that this system works, but I'm um, providing the source code to allow people to edit stuff if they'd like to, you know, and uh, really this isn't much of a problem with, um, I have no problem at all with people, you know, using this tool or changing it. Um, if you could fix the RAM problem, I'd love the source code and I'd credit you for it, but um, yeah, all I ask is that you, you know, of course, if you, of course, credit all parties involved in the creation of the tool. But um, enough of me rambling. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Give the tool a try. If, it's a, if you think it's a virus, then you've got the source code. You can read it and check to make sure it isn't if you're scared. But um, as I said again, enough rambling from me. That's all. See ya.